There are new education standards that have been mandated for school districts throughout California and in the rest of the nation. What are these new standards and why do many educators think they will lead to better performing students nationwide? We'll answer these questions and more on Talking with Henrietta, coming up next. Hi, I'm Henrietta. Welcome to the show. Many think America has been falling behind other countries when it comes to teaching students basic skills and enabling them to compete in our global economy. In 2009, education leaders and governors from 48 states led an effort to develop education standards that would enable all students throughout America to graduate from high school with a high quality education. The education standards they developed are called Common Core Standards. On this show, I have three guests who will discuss the Common Core Standards and the reasons their supporters think that they will be more effective than previous methods for teaching students in our public schools. On my far left is Dr. Gloria hernandez Golf, the superintendent of the Ravenswood City School District in East Palo Alto. Seated beside her on my immediate left is Paul Pinza, the associate principal of the William C. Overfelt High School in San Jose. To my immediate right is Braulio Gonzalez, who is a co-program director with Youth United for Community Action, also known as Yuca, which is an East Palo Alto grassroots community organization run by young people. Well, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining Thank me. You. Are you happy? Do you feel satisfied that there are now new education standards called Common Core Standards? Absolutely. I, I think that, um, as you stated, um, and we were talking a little earlier, the three of us, on how uh, the system has changed in the last few years where uh, there's a lot more creativity, a lot more acknowledgement of the different ways students learn and a lot more opportunities for them to express um, how they're learning by uh, some performance-based um, assessments, portfolios, uh, demonstrating their ability by things that they can create. Paul, do you agree with that? Do you, are you satisfied? Do you think Common Core, new Common Core standards were necessary? Absolutely. I think they're necessary for a couple of reasons. One, um, now our state and much of the country has a very clear pathway to get students ready to go to college. K through 12, we know what's necessary in terms of teaching and learning at every step of the way. Secondly, in California specifically, um, I'm excited about the Common Course push to make sure English language skills are developed across all subject areas at every level. Because of our high English learner population, I think that's mm -hmm. essential to make sure that access to college is equitable across the board. Okay, Braulio, do you agree? Yeah, I share, I share the, uh, the feelings of both my colleagues here, but I also think this is an opportunity to really look into other, other um, areas of the education system to really fi figure out what are some of the voids that need to be filled. And so I, I'm really, you know, one of the things that I'm really excited about with Common Core, it gives an opportunity for, for uh, community organizations, parents, students, and administrators and, and teachers to work collaboratively to, to implement a, a better, a new vision of education. Well, you would think on the basis of what you said, especially you, Paul, that this is something that we had all along, uh, and it wasn't. So what was wrong with what we had? Well, uh, again, what we had previously was um, basically a paper and pencil assessment that really only measured um, one way of demonstrating success and mastery of knowledge. And it was very much a, 
these are the correct answers and this is the only way you can show that you understand and that you have capacity and that you've learned. And uh, that left many of our more diverse and culturally diverse, both by language and culturally diverse populations out of the mix as well as uh, students from lower socioeconomic levels. So why, Paul, do you think having an educational standard that said this is the way it is, like one plus one equals two, left various groups out of the mix? Well, I think colleges and universities have been saying for some time that by and large students aren't graduating high school ready for college level work. Mm -hmm. And the fact is in college you're not doing one plus one equals two. You're doing much more complex thinking and uh, you mentioned creativity, Gloria. You're expected at the college level to think deeply enough mm -hmm. so that you can start to push the boundaries and think innovatively and demonstrate learning in unique ways. So I think that's where the need uh, came from. Um, you know, we, we had a system of pencil and paper tests in place that uh, maybe touched a lot of standards very superficially. And I think the Common Core is really pushing us to create that depth of thinking and that depth of knowledge. Braulio, you, I guess, uh, among the three of us, or mm -hmm. maybe among the four of us, were in, were, you were in school more recently than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> were you alienated in any way by the system that you came out of? I think so, and I think uh, prior to the show, we were having the discussion. Uh, you know, I'm a product of, of East Palo Alto. I went through the Ravenswood School District, graduated from McNair in 2003, and uh, and I was really, you know, I went, I was lucky enough to go to Miller Atherton, really proud to be a bear. However, when, when I first came to, to, to Menlo Atherton, I was placed in, uh, in ESL classes. I grew up in East Palo Alto um, in America, and I've always felt like I've been affluent in, uh, in, in reading and in math. And so that was, you know, I, I think that's the narrative of a lot of the students in East Palo Alto. And I think uh, Common Core will give an opportunity for a couple of things to happen. One is for students to really be challenged and be able to uh, show their potential. And then the other thing is it's, you know, it, it's, it's an opportunity if, um, if implemented correctly to give young people voice, right? One of the things, one of the goals of, of Common Core is to, to develop critical thinkers and problem solvers. And I think being a critical thinker and a problem solver, you have to, you have to start where, with you. Right, your situation economically at home, uh, your community, and be able to think about solutions that way. And that's the story of the, a lot of the young people I have the privilege of working with. Okay, we'll get back to that. Uh, we've talked around it, so let's talk about it. What, what is the Common Core? How would you describe it? Well, I, I think uh, for us, what it has meant is really looking at uh, Knowledge is a basic knowledge, reading and writing, reading comprehension, mathematical skills. Uh, basically, uh, as you say, one and one is two. However, uh, how do you demonstrate that? How do you show that you understand it? You don't have to speak English fluently to be able to demonstrate mathematical concepts. Uh, science, uh, scientific programs, we have, again, um, by the by integrating the common core, common core knowledge now is reading across and literacy across content areas. So we're looking at literacy, not just in terms of reading stories and narratives, but really integrating science, integrating history, integrating um, problem solving and demonstrating. The, so there, the, the, uh, one of the things that Braulio and um, that we discussed earlier is uh, a concept that uh, through the youth organizing group that he's doing, uh, they brought students in and asked them, what are the problems that, you're that you are experiencing in your community and in, it, in your education? And what are the things that you'd like to see and how can we solve them? That is a perfect example of common core usage, common core knowledge, because they came up with some things that they wanted. They wrote about them, they dialogued about them, they talked about possible solutions, and now they're working on those solutions. That's what Common Core is about. Oh, that's interesting. It, it looks, some would say it's more problem solving, it's perhaps. It's completely, it's critical thinking, uh, problem solving, innovations. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in Ravenswood right now 
through the with Common Core around um, STEM, science, technology, um, uh, excuse me, engineering and, and math, math. And, and, and art. And They're now say STEAM. Right. STEAM. Yes. So right. it's mm -hmm. all integrated as part of our um, literacy initiative. So it seems it's making education. You said integrated, more integrated. Uh, taking into consideration, encompassing various aspects right. of everyday life. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very engaging for students because they can find a way. If he, he, uh, Brawley was talking about student voice. Mm -hmm. They're not the empty vessel that's going to be filled by the teacher's knowledge. They are creators of their own knowledge because they can follow interest exactly. that really, um, that they want to pursue to so meet those it standards. seems they're making interpretations from the information that yes. they're receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something that we worked really hard um, uh, at Overfelt to create. We focused as a staff very specifically on what our vision of mm -hmm. the Common Core would be mm -hmm. for our school and for our community mm -hmm. uh, of students. And uh, we've really hit upon the creative thinking aspect and so we've pushed uh, to create more student-centered instruction in our classrooms and really develop assignments that uh, don't just uh, give students the opportunity to follow directions, but give them a chance to build upon the teacher's guidance and the material that's delivered in their unique way. It, so it is interpretive. It's, it's applying the knowledge in a way that's very relevant to the youth, and we've really pushed instruction that way very consciously. Well, it certainly seems, given the high dropout rates, yeah. that this is a system mm -hmm. that is more engaging to the students mm -hmm. themselves. If, Absolutely. If, if I can, so one of the things that Yuka did was uh, we, we work with a, a, another nonprofit in San Mateo Youth Leadership Institute and one of the things that we did is that we, we surveyed 150 students and what we were, our task was to, to find out what students from Ravenswood, Sequoia Union High School District and Jefferson High School District, what did they know about Common Core? And one of the problems that we've seen is that 65, 60, about 65 percent of the students that we, that we uh, reached out to didn't know about Common Core. So one of the things as we address Common Core, we also have to think about how we incorporate the voice of the young people. And, and you know, it, it, it highlighted a couple of things, right? It, you know, and, and uh, it's been said, but I want to definitely echo um, because it's needed. I think a lot of times we've had to, you know, as adults, um, we think about young people, students, right, uh, as, uh, you know, as, as um, not being able to form an idea and be able to express it, that, you know, the, 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 uh, presentations and the focus groups that we've done has really contradicted that. You know, the young people are critical now. You know, they, they can think critically. They see what the problem is and they could easily come up with a solution. And we've seen that. Um, what I think is missing and I think needs to be, be incorporated is, is this, this, this thought or this idea that we can, you know, in order for us to not just focus on a common core but to improve the education system is to, is to incorporate the young people into the, into the problem solving. Um, as well as the parents and community organizations. Um, and one of the things, you know, one of the things that I, we have to really think about it. At the end of the day, who is affected and who benefits from the teaching or non-teaching is the students. And if we want to create a, you know, a, a young people who are, are ready to go to college, we need to be able to invest in them. And for some, some students, investing in them is just opening, you know, the doors to have a conversation and to value their, their opinion. So let's go more deeply into Common Core standards themselves. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned what it meant for Overfelt. Mm -hmm. And you prepared a slide presentation. And so let's take a look at it and maybe go through some of it, talking about each slide and, and getting your reactions. So uh, we're looking at the first one, I hope, up there on um, uh, how, what, what would you say about that? So this, um, uh, this is a basic uh, breakdown of, of our school's demographics. We're 90% uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged. Um, vast majority of our students are English learners, most of them long term. Um, uh, a, fair, a, a very uh, solid special needs population and most of our uh, parents are um, high school graduates or uh, did not complete high school. So uh, a lot of first generation uh, uh, seniors okay. uh, in terms of college going. Paul, let me stop you for a moment. Sure. Do those statistics 
kind of resemble what's in the Ravenswood City School District? Actually, ours are 95% um, free and reduced lunch, 85% uh, uh, Latino, 11% uh, African American, and, uh, and then the rest is uh, a Pacific Islander. Mm. And we have a um, pretty large number of English learners. It's in about 82%. So your two school districts would fall maybe at the bottom in terms of performing school districts right. in California. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you are um, very enthusiastic that Common Core can turn that some of those statistics around. Yes. Well, and let's be clear that uh, underperforming is under the old regime of paper and pencil test uh, as the way to measure performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Common Core, I think, really gives a lot more credence to uh, education that is more student-centered and is much more student-relevant mm -hmm. in terms of how they apply the material. Okay, so let's go on to the second slide. So um, in, in terms of what the Common Core uh, actually consists of, it's new standards in math and in English, and that includes um, reading and writing standards that span all subject areas. So uh, one of the groundbreaking things of Common Core, one of the groundbreaking elements is that now all subject areas in a secondary school, whether it's history, science, or the arts, or electives, they're all charged with explicitly teaching close reading strategies and explicitly teaching writing. No, let's let's get this straight. The information in terms of English and history and math, the content remains the same. It's a method, it's the approach to presenting the content. The curriculum, the actual textbooks could remain the same. The difference uh, many times it doesn't it doesn't remain the same. But what the big shift is in the instruction, how teachers work with students, how teaching and learning occurs in the classroom, and the performance outcomes for students that, in the way they demonstrate their knowledge. The, so that's, it's those more are the participatory changes. on the yes. part of the students. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go to the third slide, if we could. So uh, these are slides from uh, presentations that we've actually done to parents um, uh, to explain uh, the basic principles of the Common Core. So we, we started with kind of the old school, uh, pre-Common Core idea about education, which is the teacher holds all the information, the student absorbs the information, and then if you go to the next slide, uh, the student is basically expected to bring that information back on a test. Um, and uh, what we have found, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is that colleges and universities are saying this is not enough. These are not the only skills that students need to have in order to be ready for university level work. And okay. can I interject something? Sure, here? and we can lose that slide just for the moment. But the other thing that happens is not only are our students not college and career ready, but they're not prepared for the workforce either. Mm -hmm. Well, you and can't prepare. Uh, a middle school student for the workforce, now can you? Actually those skills, uh, we've done backward mapping and those skills that predict success uh, and ha having all of the assets to be a successful young adult actually um, start to be manifested in preschool. Mm -hmm. For example, give well, me an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. We, we talk about um, starting our kindergartners um, kindergarten ready. In Ravenswood, in our district, two-thirds of our students come into our kindergarten classes already two years behind because we don't have enough preschools and preschool space for them. So uh, where in other parts of our community, uh, when children start kindergarten, they've already been in a preschool program for two years a very high functioning preschool but that has a lot of enrichment activities, a lot of language rich activities, a lot of engaging activities. And our children come in without that foundation. And you add to that um, the language, 
um, issues where they might speak another language at home, so they are acquiring English. So you're talking about basic skills. Basic skills, but they, we talk about, you know, we're, this is all tied to that achievement gap, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which there is a gap that already exists in kindergarten. And each year of it gets school, it wider. gets wider and wider for many of our students. Okay, now, when we looked at that slide, the last one, Paul talked about the testing that mm -hmm. students are supposed to give back what they learned on mm -hmm. the test, they'll still be tested, won't they? Yes, absolutely. Okay, can we go to the next slide? So under the, the, the common core structure, um, rather than students simply devouring the information, we see, we see our job as uh, building young chefs of information, if you will. So the common core uh, really demands that uh, the instruction changes so that the kind of learning students are able to do changes. We want students who don't just absorb information, exactly. but who know, who know how to find information for the questions they're asking, how to manipulate uh, and address that information so that they can apply it to real situations around them and express their unique points of view. So what that reminds me of is learning by rote where you, you learn the formulas, you learn the rules of grammar, and you give it back to the teacher. That was the old style. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. Yes, That's right. yes. yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now this is the manipulation, the ability right. to manipulate that. Yes. Uh, can we go to the next slide, if there is a next slide? Well, it's, um, uh, it, it, it looks much less cluttered with the animation, but essentially uh, we talk about the real shift in math. Um, which uh, students and, and teachers are at Overfeld are really in the trenches of. And um, if in the background there you see the multiplication table, and if the old school simply demanded that students memorize the multiplication tables so that they could recite what 11 times 4 was, um, with the common core, it, it's very much conceptual so that you understand that um, okay, when I say 8 times 5, what I'm really doing is taking groups of 8 like eight slices in the pizza there, and multiplying that out by five groups or five pizzas. So Common Core really stresses uh, uh, language usage in math so that students don't just get how the numbers work together, but they understand conceptually what they're doing at, at any time they're, mm -hmm. they're calculating. Uh, Braulio, do you have any comments on well, the slides and what we've seen this Not time? about math specifically. I think one of the other things that, well, I know that one of the other things that uh, Common Core addresses is the English component. And one of the things that we did in our study groups or in, in our presentations is we asked, you know, one of the, we asked the question, what engages you, right? If, if a teacher's supposed to engage you and you're supposed to become a critical thinker, what will we'll, we'll engage you? And we found very, you know, we, and students are very critical and very thoughtful. And for the students that we surveyed in Ravenswood School District, uh, we not only did we didn't only just work with schools and going to, to the classrooms, we also work with community organizations um, in East Palo Alto um, that engage young people. And a couple of things came out, right? Specifically about the English class, if you know, and we asked like, what's going to engage you? And young people said, you know, what's more engaging than learning my history, right? Ethnic studies will engage me. We're in class all the time. Right? And sometimes I can't relate to the, to the, to the curriculum. So as, you know, as we talk about Common Core, not only there has to, it, it's not just a change in how teaching happens, that uh, come from teacher, it's what the, you know, the curriculum, what opportunity do we have to implement new curriculum that's gonna engage students to build their interest. Similarly, one of the things that they said is like, you know, we, East Palo is a really new uh, city with a lot of history, why not teach that? Right, and so it's, it's, it's a couple of things that you know, that, 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 that were highlighted that I think are really worth looking at and researching. Okay, now, if you stress the creativity mm -hmm. and the manipulation of the content, then it almost gets as if it, it becomes very individualized. Yes. But then at the same time, there has to be something common about it that cuts across the individualization so you could really see the mastery that the student mm -hmm. has, and if it's all individualized. But it's, it's the mastery of the concepts is what we're looking at. The mastery of the foundational concept and many different ways of expressing it. And what's the beauty of the Common Core when it's project-based or performance-based is that students can work individually, they can work in groups, but the sharing that comes out, they get to see how other 
uh, students and other pairs or other groups attacked the same problem and how they solved it. And the concepts are going to be the same, but the way of showing and demonstrating their knowledge is going to be different based on the group. Okay, now Paul, you said that what has been done traditionally has not been good enough for colleges. Mm -hmm. Why? If students, those who do score high on the SATs, mm -hmm. uh, can demonstrate by their high scores that they've mastered the material, is that good enough? Well, the colleges and the universities uh, have said that um, the, the high school uh, transcript GPA and some of the state test scores doesn't, hasn't indicated uh, college readiness to this point. And I think that goes back to what the standards uh, focused on because the state tests were built on the old set of standards. So I, with, with Common Core, um, and again, this shift towards really centering instruction on the student and how the student masters skills. Um, we're, we're getting ready for, we're getting them ready for uh, the college going environment. At, at Overfelt, we hold a, a voluntary Saturday school uh, twice a month where students can come and meet with teachers and study independently, get help when they need it. And, I'll, and our library looks like a college library with students uh, using laptops that we provide. Uh, they're sitting in tables and groups collaboratively putting together uh, their projects for a variety of classes. Um, teachers are holding essentially office hours in their classroom and we regularly get uh, 300 students showing up on a Saturday voluntarily to to have that additional engagement. So Braulio, I think you're 100% right. I'm seeing plenty of evidence mm -hmm. that this new shift in instruction actually engages students more. Mm -hmm. um, it's bringing them to our campus on a Saturday in droves. That's amazing. And I think we have, yes. I, I just wanted to add a little bit to this. Sure. The model that we've used in, in schools for a long time was based on the needs of our old economy. Mm. And the economy and um, technology, there have been great advances. So uh, let's talk about the old economy mm -hmm and how that differs from our global economy now. Right. Well, uh, a lot of it really is, well, here in Silicon Valley, I think we're at the forefront of, of the new economy, our, our boom right here with technology. But all of those technologies and those, the approach that is so necessary with um, the new marketplace and the global economy, it's really not about rote memorization or having the right answer. It's having a, a breadth of knowledge or a foundational knowledge of concepts so that if there's a problem, you can solve it, you can find a new solution for it. So it's, it's innovative thinking. And uh, in a lot of, of what we're looking at, the jobs that, are, that we're hiring right now, they did not exist. 25, 30 years yes, ago. Yes, we're not in or necessarily 15. 15 a, a, a manufacturing economy right. anymore. And so the skills that employers are looking for are for jobs, uh, well, jobs of the future that right now we don't even know what those jobs are. That's true. So it's that adaptability of having, uh, being able to figure things out and adapt to the needs of the workplace and explore and be able to uh, think out of the box. Let's go through the rest of the slides and then we'll go back to thinking out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a summary of what uh, our entire district, the Eastside Union High School District, has uh, focused on in terms of uh, their vision to go along with the Common Core. Uh, students graduating, uh, not just knowing information, but empowered mm -hmm. to really transform their lives and to thrive in a global society. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mission connected to that focuses on our learning environments changing so that they are more dynamic, they are more flexible. As you said uh, earlier, Henrietta, they, they are designed to give each student a chance 
to access the material in a slightly different way. It is very differentiated and dynamic um, because that's what's needed to really inspire students to develop those critical thinking skills, those problem solving skills. I'll give you a quick example. Our, our biology teachers collaborated um, when they were all focusing on uh, various uh, cellular processes in the body and decided that the end product uh, was going to be a public service announcement that the students created uh, independently to show what they uh, were able to get out of those units mm -hmm. and so they're presenting the knowledge in unique ways because the PSAs all looked very different, but it's, it's about how they're able to make sense of their own understanding of what happens in the body and what it means to be healthy and express that. And the teachers are working very closely and very collaboratively um, so that they can assess each individual uh, PSA um, to see how the mastery is, is being demonstrated, even as different content is being highlighted in each one.